Welcome to the first ever Flutter video on this channel. Today we'll start from scratch and build a user authentication system using Firebase Google Sign-In and Firestore. The UI is nothing special, but this video is important because it will show you how to handle real-time streams of data from external sources and update the UI reactively. If you're new here, like and subscribe, and you can grab the full source code from Fireship.io. I'd like to start by saying that this video is intermediate level, so if you're brand new to Flutter, it might seem a little overwhelming. But don't worry, because next week I have a more gentle introduction plan that's specifically for JavaScript and or TypeScript developers. We're starting from scratch, so the first thing we'll do is run Flutter create from the command line to create a new app. We can then open up the app in VS Code, and we'll have some configuration to do for the platforms we want to use. In this case, we'll only be setting up Android, but the iOS setup is super easy, so feel free to do that if you're on a Mac. From here, we'll jump into the Firebase console, click on the Android button, and then we'll need to set a package ID for our project. That should be something like com, your company name, followed by the app name, so io.fireship.lessonapp in this case. The next thing we'll want to do is generate a signing certificate specifically for Google OAuth. We can generate it by copying and pasting this command, I'll link that in the full lesson, and then going to the terminal and entering the command. I'm not sure if this is a problem on my end or if the command is just outdated, but it gives me an error if I try to use export cert and list together. If it works for you, then that's great, but if not, you'll want to go in here and take out the list from the command. And then when prompted for a password, type in Android in all lowercase. And finally, copy and paste the same command, but this time delete export cert from it. That should give you an SHA-1 certificate that you can just copy and paste in there, and then click the next step, and that will give us our Google Services JSON file. We can download it and save it in the Android app directory inside of our Flutter project. Now getting back to VS Code, we'll go into that Android directory, it should look something like this, and then we'll open up the build Gradle file inside of the app directory. Inside this file, you'll see the application ID. We'll want to switch that to the application ID that we chose on Firebase. Then down at the very bottom, we will apply the plugin that's required for Google services. And lastly, we need to go up one level to the Android directory, and you'll see another build Gradle file there. In this one, we need to find the dependencies and then add the class path that references the Google services plugin. Then the final thing we'll do is go into the pubspec YAML and add our actual dependencies for this project. For a Firebase mobile app, you'll almost always need Firebase core and analytics. And then we'll also bring in Firestore, Firebase auth, and Google sign-in is its own plugin. And lastly, I'm adding RxDart, which is optional, but it gives you a lot of power when working with real-time streams in Firebase. And we'll see direct examples of that throughout this lesson. At this point, let's go ahead and run Flutter Run just to make sure we don't have any errors in the console or in the app itself. That should give us the default Flutter app that looks something like this. From here, we're going to transform this app into a login button that reacts to the user's authentication state. In addition, this feature will save any custom data that we want to the Firestore database. For example, we might want to customize the user profile with a unique username or some other unique data, or we might have additional relational data that we need to query based on the user's user ID. Okay, so now let's write some code. First, I'm going into the main Dart file, and I'm just going to delete pretty much everything in here. The only thing I want to keep is the My App widget, just so we have a container to display our button. So inside the Material app, you'll see a body property, and in that we can go ahead and set up a child that is a column, and the reason I'm using a column here is because we can add multiple widgets to it and they'll just be stacked on top of each other. So basically what we're going to do is just flesh out our UI inside this widget array. We're going to need two different buttons. We'll have one to sign in with Google and then one to sign out. Every material button has an on-pressed event handler that we can implement to do something when the user clicks on a button. Right now it does nothing, but we'll set that up in the next step. Then we'll go ahead and set up a second material button. This one will be to log out when the user is authenticated. It's the exact same widget, just with some different coloring and text. So if we run the app at this point, you should see the two buttons up here at the top of the view. If we want to center our buttons, we can actually go into the column widget and adjust the main axis alignment to center. And that puts our buttons in the middle. Now it's time to switch gears and talk about the authentication logic. It's generally a good idea to separate your business logic from your UI or presentation logic. And that's exactly what we're going to do here by creating a new file called auth.dart. Now, Flutter's not very opinionated about the way you share global data or handle your state management. And you'll see a lot of examples out there that use Redux or inherited widgets. But when you're just prototyping, one of the easiest things to do is just expose a global variable. 
So that's what we're going to do here by creating an auth class. And then we'll go ahead and instantiate that as our auth service and just have that sit in the global namespace. It's not a true singleton, but we will only instantiate it once and it will live outside of our actual widget tree. Inside the class itself, we'll start by defining some private members for Firebase and Google sign-in. Then the actual values that will be available to our widgets will all be either observables or streams. And it's also important that they are multi-subscription streams or hot observables. In Dart, a stream is only able to handle one subscription by default, but we want to share these streams in potentially many different widgets globally throughout the app. So that's an important rule to follow if you're exposing a global stream. The observable user is the user that we get from Firebase Authentication, while the profile is the custom user data that we save about that user in the database. And lastly, we'll create a subject for the loading state, which is just an observable that we can push new values to manually. So these three streams define our state, and then we'll have our widgets listen to them and then update the UI reactively. The next thing we'll do is just go over all the methods that are available on the service. Google sign-in will be used when the user taps a button and it will take them to their Google account so they can log in and authenticate. Update user data will update that user's record in Firestore. And sign out will sign the user out of Firebase. The first thing we'll do is go up here to the constructor and define the user observable. So by default, Firebase is already giving this to us as a stream, so we can just wrap it inside of observable. And that will change anytime the user signs in or signs out. Now, in order to retrieve the user's profile from Firestore, we first need to know the value of their user ID. This is where RxDart is going to start making our life a lot easier, because we can just use this switch map operator, which will listen to the value of the user observable, then it will switch to a different observable, in this case, the observable of the Firestore data for that user. So we can just point to the user's collection, grab the document with the corresponding user ID, grab the snapshots, and then I'm also going to map the snapshots to their actual data payload just for convenience here. When the user is not signed in, we're not going to have a user ID. So in that case, we want to return some observable data from switch map, which we can do with observable just and an empty object. So that gives us observables we can listen to in the widgets. Now we just need a way for the user to sign in. As soon as the user clicks on the Google sign in button, we're going to flip the loading state to true. And we can do that by simply calling add on our loading stream. Then the next thing we'll do is just follow the steps required to get the user signed in. So first we will call the Google sign in method and that will trigger the sign in process. Once that's completed, it will give us the user's ID token and auth token. At this point, the user will be signed in with Google, but not Firebase. But we can easily sign them into Firebase by just taking the tokens and then passing them to the Google sign-in method from Firebase Auth. Then we'll update their user data in Firestore, which we'll implement here in the next step, and then we'll flip the loading state to false. The reason I put this in a separate method is that if you have multiple sign-in options, you can reuse this code for each of them. And basically we're just making a reference to the same Firestore document, and then we're calling ref set data with whatever custom data we want to put in there. I'm going to add a timestamp of the current date just so we can see that update when we sign in and sign out. And adding the merge true option will make this a non-destructive update so it won't overwrite any existing user data in that document. And lastly, we can just call auth sign out to sign out the user. So that takes care of our business logic for authentication. Now we can get to the really cool part, which is making Flutter reactive. We'll look at two different ways we can make the UI update when the values in those streams change. The first one we'll look at is a stateful widget, which works very similar to a React.js component if you're familiar with React. But first we'll go into the buttons that we defined earlier and implement their on pressed event handlers. That's as simple as calling auth service Google sign in and sign out inside of these functions. At this point, you should be able to sign into the app with your Google account. And when you do that, you should also see the data updated in Firestore. The first thing we'll do is define a new widget called the user profile that extends stateful widget. The only thing this widget needs to do is call the create state method for the user profile state. The next step is to define the state, which is the user profile state, and it extends the state class with the user profile that we just defined. Now this widget can listen to our global streams and then set its own internal state that we can actually show in the UI. In this demo, I'm just going to be really lazy with the UI and we'll just show the user profile and the loading state as a string. Now, when you set up listeners on a stream or observable, you usually want to make sure that the state is initialized, which you can do inside the init state lifecycle hook. So all we have to do here is call the auth service profile listen that will set up the subscription and then that will give us the state from that subscription and then we'll use it to call set state on the stateful widget. Set state is important and it's built into stateful widgets 
and it just tells the widget to re-render when it's called. So you should only use set state to update values on the widget. All the computation should be done outside of it. Then we can go ahead and do the exact same thing for the loading state from the auth service. And now the UI for this widget will re-render anytime the values in these streams change. Now we don't have any UI in this widget yet, so let's go ahead and add that inside of its build function. Again, I'm being super lazy with the UI here, so I'm just setting up a column that has a container. Then we'll render out the underlying data as text widgets. So this is nice for debugging, but obviously not what you'd want in a real app. When we log in, we should see this object that's the data from Firestore, and then below that we have false for the loading state. You'll notice that even though we're logged in, we're still showing both the login button and the logout button. Instead of doing that in a stateful widget, we can actually do it in a stateless widget using a thing called a stream builder. You'll also notice that it has a lot less complexity and boilerplate code than the stateful widget. The stream builder is a widget itself that takes two arguments. The first one is the stream to listen to, and then the second one is a function that will return some UI elements based on the state of the stream. So for our login button, we want to listen to the user observable, and then if the user is logged in, we'll show the sign out button. If not, we'll show the sign in with Google button. So the builder function gives you two things to work with, the context and then the snapshot of the stream itself. In our case, the snapshot will be the user, so we can see if the user has data, then we know that the user is logged in. Otherwise, we know the user is logged out. So we can actually just go and grab the material buttons that we already created, then put them into the corresponding spot in this conditional. So now whenever the stream emits a new value, it will just automatically re-render based on this logic in the builder function. I'm going to go ahead and wrap things up there. If this video helped you, please like and subscribe. And I'm really curious to get your feedback on this video. My plan is to make a lot more Flutter videos in the future, but it's really based on what you guys want to see. Make sure to grab the full source code from Fireship.io. Thanks for watching, and I will talk to you soon.